today it's time for the second episode of how to mix an EDM song so let's head over to the studio and get that mix done welcome to the John Science studio John Science studio I don't know the studio probably needs a proper name. Any suggestions are really welcome. And I'm extremely, extremely happy because I just checked Spotify on the way here to the studio and my Stay song, which was released exactly a week ago, has over 20,000 plays, which is amazing. The best start ever. I think one of my first releases had 5,000 within the first week. The last one had, I think, 12 and now 20 good really really good thanks a lot to all of you for listening to the song if you haven't checked it out yet you still got the chance it's up there on spotify the link is in the description also just a short little disclaimer i'm extremely 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 tired i had maybe i don't know three hours of sleep project x still going on full throttle no news on that but soon i think next week friday I have the next big step. And speaking of work, first up for me, working on one of my own songs, which will probably take the entire day. And then the second part of the EDM mixing session of Callum Edding's song. It's already quite late, all done with my section of the day. So let's um, open up another Logic project, the one that I mixed. The first part, if you haven't checked it out, go check it out. It was about getting like the levels right between the elements, the tonal balance, having enough bass, mid frequencies and top end. That's like the first step, having low cuts on every single element. And today the next big step is definitely adding reverb. Because at the moment it just sounds flat and everything is up front. So a couple of elements definitely need to go more in the back, especially the vocals and chopped vocals. So let me again play you the rough mix of the artist, my version as it is now, and then start with the reverbs. <laughs> First up, some general rules and suggestions for reverbs. Usually on the kick, you won't need a reverb. Also on the sub bass, no reverb. It's just muddy, doesn't make any sense. There is no real room separation in the low end. Everything else needs reverb, basically. I can't really come up with anything that doesn't need reverb. Um, small hi-hats need a tiny bit of ambience, maybe like 0.4 seconds of like an ambience reverb. Uh, clap or snare needs a longer reverb depending on the tempo of the song. The main elements need quite a lot of reverb as well as the vocals depending on how far you actually want to push them to the back and how dreamy you want to, to have them. If you have something dry in a mix, it just really sticks out. So have even the tiniest bit of reverb. Even on elements where you can't hear the reverb, you just hear the difference A and B comparison. In the entire mix it just sounds nicer if everything has a space because it's just unnatural just think about a human life walking around and all sounds we experience all of them have reverb to them because we're always in a space so if it's dry it just sounds really awkward it's like standing in, in like a that chamber that has no reverb at all it just yeah not natural don't do it First up, let's get into the drum section. We have the kick, no reverb. We have the top kick. There it depends. You can have a tiny bit of reverb on the top kick and it will give your song a more 80s kind of vibe for this future bass song. Also there, no reverb. The reverb for the snares is quite important. They just don't really work without. Here it's all about finding the sweet spot between decay and the amount of reverb. To make them to make the reverb sustain so long until the next kick hits and then kind of make it stop around that time this will just sound nicer not muddy up the kick too much if your reverb is so long that it goes until the next snare or clap it's definitely too long so try to make it stop right around the kick 
So let's also solo the kick. Then there is another snare with a little bit more tone to it. And here I actually want a tiny bit more reverb. And also on the third one. This might sound like too much reverb now that we're just listening to kick and snares, but when it's in the entire mix, it should be all right. Next up, we have this trap hi-hat doing its thing. Um, here, definitely one of those ambient reverbs. I have a bus set up for this, either the MB reverb or the small reverb. I think here I will go with the small one. So just a tiny bit, just so that you can hear it. So when you listen to it with it, without, without it's strange, and with it sounds more natural. And as you can hear, it's just that tiny bit, but it makes it way more lively and natural. For the hats, we still need to EQ them. Just making sure there's nothing left on the low end. Usually hi-hats don't have anything down there, but just in case. Later on, I will also EQ them in the top end to get rid of some resonating frequencies. But maybe it's also all right as it is. I, I will have to check later on that. We got here also an additional clap. Also here again, low cut. The same reverb usually as the snares. Okay, I think that's pretty much it for the drum section. And now I will put all of those buses into one to group them up, all of the drum elements. So everything I've soloed at the moment, I will select and add it to bus number two, our drums. In that bus, I've set up a glue compressor with parallel compression. It's quite easy. You just heavily, heavily compress the signal and then add just my maybe four or 5% of that heavily compressed signal with the dry and wet knob to the mix. So it sounds more compressed. That's usually what, what you're used to, to compress drum sounds without actually reducing the dynamics that much. It's a little trick. I mean, you can look it up. I already made a couple of videos about it. There are plenty online, go check it out. It's a, it's a subtle change, but I like to use it on all of my drums. So here the heavily compressed one. Just sounds bad, so of the bad stuff, just, yeah, maybe here in this case, even 7%. Let's head over to the basses and see if any one of those needs a reverb. So the sub bass here, definitely not. Really, don't put on a sub, sub, sub bass like this ever reverb. Now, the growl bass, maybe. Actually, yes, it's so up in the frequencies that it just is too upfront and dry. It's too much in your face. So let's get it a little bit into the background. I have one here, bus seven instrument reverb. Let's try it out. Here again, just so that you barely hear that there is reverb on it. Don't drown your basses in reverb, never ever. And that's the, the very top bass, also here, reverb again, just a tiny bit. I think that's all right. Now, next up, the, the lead synthesizers, the chord steps, there are quite a few of them. So balancing those will be hard. If you layer a lot of main sounds, be careful with the reverb. Don't put reverb 
onto all of them in the same amount, choose the main sound, give it the right reverb, and then adjust the other elements to it and try to give them less reverb. Or maybe here in that case, if it's layered, no reverb at all, because the main element has a reverb. So if they all play the same at the same time, it appears as all of them have a reverb, but it is less muddy if it's just on one of them and usually you should really go for the main sound. So at the end, I just have reverb on three of them. Let me mute the reverb on the main synthesizers and then do a little comparison before and after. Also here, very subtle, because I think like some of the synthesizers out of the presets have already some type of room on it. So you have to be careful with it. If their sound already has reverb, don't usually try adding another reverb because then the reverb of the reverb has a reverb, which doesn't sound good at all. So try to remove in the presets the reverbs. They're usually set to way too much to use it in a mix because people that make presets, for them it's all about making that one preset sound good on its own so that you buy the presets, but they don't think about making sounds that you can actually use in a mix. So usually you have to dial them down get some of the effects off of those presets. Next up, my favorite part of vocals, reverbs on vocals are golden. We don't have any reverb on it. It sounds really awkward when you listen to it. Now, first up, reverb to the main vocals. They are just playing in a small section in the drop. And then there are also those pitched vocals, a subversion and a main version. They definitely need a ton of reverb. Yeah, I think that's all right. Don't put too much reverb on top, not too little. I think I still have to heavily, heavily mix the vocals. They have way too much dynamic. And I think the main thing that will be a, a hard part getting this track mixed in the next episode is definitely getting the space for those vocals because the synthesizers have the same frequency. They're all playing at the same time with the chopped vocals. So I have either to dial down the, the synthesizers, the chord steps, and just use maybe two or three layers, or maybe EQing them and making a little bit of room in, in the mid part for the vocals. If it would be my track, I would go into the production and change it there. But here, maybe, maybe I will filter in certain sections um, some of the frequencies whenever the vocal is playing. There are some tools, it's kind of like a sidechain whenever the vocal is on the synthesizer gets gets um, dimmed down a tiny bit. Um, I think that's already it for today. As I said, I'm extremely, extremely tired. I work today like eight, nine hours on a song, a lot of business stuff. I have a meeting coming up really short and then finally, finally getting some sleep and weekend. So we'll continue with this mix series definitely next week and continue it as long as it takes to get this thing done step by step. So for the end, again, the comparison between the rough mix and, and the new mixed version. I listened also to it again. I think the, the main synthesizers are just a tiny bit too too loud, so I will lower them in the next episode. Now it's really time to just get some sleep finally. I think tomorrow I will yeah, not really take the day off, but maybe just do a, a track submit. So if you're interested to submit your songs to get feedback by me in one of those videos where I give feedback, the link is down below in the description. Um, and yeah, 
and that's pretty much it. Don't forget about the remix contest. Just a couple more days, and we will see us tomorrow again. Hopefully, after a long, long, long night with a lot of sleep. Yeah.